When you ask for a letter of recommendation, you usually expect one of two responses, yes or no. Sometimes, however, things can be a little more complicated than that. Instead of a straightforward yes or no, sometimes your professor will ask for you to write your own letter of recommendation for them to review and sign. So today I want to talk to you a little bit about this and give you some tips on content and structure for writing your own letter of recommendation. First, hi, my name is Dr. Sarah Klebe and I'm an admissions expert at BMO. So you've taken the step of asking for a letter of recommendation. A lot of students find this really stressful, especially the first time. I know the first time I had to ask for a letter of recommendation, I was absolutely terrified. Uh, I was asking for a letter from a professor I'd worked with for years. I'd been a student for years. I'd been in half a dozen courses with them. I'd done well in all of them. We got along really well. We talked in office hours and all of that, but I was still terrified that he was going to say no. So if you've come out of this sort of stressful situation and gotten an answer that you didn't expect, sure, write your own letter of recommendation. Um, that can be a little disorienting, a little confusing. And so I want to walk you through this a little bit. Um, first and foremost, I want to encourage you to think of this as an opportunity, right? Usually letters of recommendation are completely confidential. Students don't see them. They don't see anything that's in them. They have no idea what's been said about them. Uh, back a uh, hundred years ago or so, when I was applying to grad school and getting my first letters of recommendation, we still did everything in hard copy. And so I remember professors would have to you know, print out their letter, sign it, put it in an envelope, and then sign across the seal of the envelope, the closed seal of the envelope, so that it was absolutely certain that the student hadn't uh, pried in and looked at their letter of recommendation. Uh, some professors would still let students see the letters that they were writing for them, but that wasn't terribly common. So um, in this instance, if you're being asked to write your own letter of recommendation, you get to see what's in it right? I mean, the professor still has the right to edit it, change it, delete things, add things, whatever they want, but you still have some idea of what's going into your letter. And so that can be a really positive thing. If you're approaching a particular professor because you really, really hope that they'll speak to certain qualities that you have, certain projects that you've done and things like that, if you're writing your own letter of recommendation, or at least the draft of it, you don't have to guess. You can make sure that those things make it into the letter because you can put them there. So having some say in this can be really, really useful. So please look at it as an opportunity. It might be intimidating. I'll break down some things that'll help you work through it in just a minute. Um, but overall, it can be a really positive experience that acts to your benefit. Um, one thing that I also want to just quickly note is that if you get a response like this to your request for a letter of recommendation, it doesn't reflect poorly on you at all. Usually, if a professor makes a request of this kind, it just is because they're overworked. Um, they want to support your application, but they just don't have time to write the letter. So if you get this request, it doesn't reflect poorly or negatively on you. It doesn't mean that they don't really want to support your application or anything like that. Don't worry. If a professor doesn't want to recommend you, they're not going to agree to recommend you, whether they're writing the letter or you're writing the letter. Um, so don't think that this in any way means that uh, they aren't invested in your success or, or you know, that they don't want you to, to get into the program that you're applying to. It's not that at all. If anything, it's that they really want to be able to support you, but they simply don't have the time. So don't let this um, crush your confidence or anything like that. Um, another thing, just before I get into tips really quickly, do note that you are allowed to say no. If you're really, really uncomfortable with the idea of writing your own le letter of recommendation in any way, even with the professor reviewing it and editing, editing it afterwards, it's it's fine to say no. Um, they're not going to be offended or anything like that, as long as you're respectful and polite about it. It's completely within your right to say that you would prefer not to do that. Um, 
you can also find sort of middle ground uh, if you're not comfortable actually composing a literal letter but you don't want to say no either you can give them a list of bullet points and maybe a copy of your application essay if, if applicable um, so that they have something to start with to work with to build on as opposed to just you know the sort of blank page in front of them so again, if there are certain things that you hope that they would include in your letter, you can include those as part of a, a list of bullet points or um, just you know, specific kinds of ideas, qualities, projects that you want them to refer to. So with those said, let me give you some quick tips on content and structure for letter recommendation. Um, first, in terms of content, it's really important that you're able to acknowledge your accomplishments. Um, students are often really uncomfortable given, giving themselves um, praise and, and things like that. But, you know, becoming a mature professional means being able to look honestly at the things that you've done with your academics and, you know, extracurriculars and things like that so far, and being able to identify when you have done things genuinely well, when you've had positive accomplishments and things like that. So, you know, noting your academic excellence, uh, research projects that you've done, um, maybe volunteering service, extracurriculars, if the professor would be aware of those things and able to speak to them, those are all fine things to talk about in your application. That said, you also want to make sure that you are humble in doing so. Um, Maintaining that degree of humility first, make sure that or ensures that you're going to represent a professorial voice effectively. Um, it is highly unlikely that any professor is ever going to say something like, uh, the student is by far the most impressive, hyper intelligent, most promising student I've ever taught in all my years of teaching. That's just not what letters of recommendation sound like. That's not the kind of content that they have. Those also aren't really particularly useful descriptors. And I'll talk more about that in a minute. Um, so, you know, it's not the language of a letter of recommendation. The content there isn't actually very useful. There isn't actually much content to uh, terms like, uh, you know, outstanding student, promising student, etc. cetera. But um, also, you know, if you can't say without an absolute doubt that you actually are the best student, the top student that this professor has ever taught, then making a claim like that would be sort of really over the top. It would be an excessively bold claim to make that could end up reflecting negatively on you. So by all means, acknowledge your accomplishments and be honest about them, but also be humble, maintain that sense of humility. It'll make sure that you get the tone right, uh, the kinds of wording right, uh, consistent with letters of recommendation. And it'll also make sure that you don't sort of overstep any boundaries. Uh, my second tip in terms of content, be specific don't try to cover everything. No one letter of recommendation is going to refer to every accomplishment you've ever had or every positive quality that you possess. Um, first off, they're just usually not long enough to do that. And I'll talk about length more in just a minute. Um, but uh, also that would just kind of ramble on. You want to focus on two to three major themes or qualities that that particular letter writer could speak to effectively because of their actual relationship with you. So, you know, talking about, say, your extracurriculars, if your professor has never heard anything about your extracurriculars, has no idea what you do as extracurriculars, that wouldn't be relevant. Instead, Think about the kinds of qualities you've demonstrated in their courses and in any projects that you've done with them. Think about how those align with the key values and competencies of the discipline to which you are applying and sort of bring those two worlds together. Um, a quick note uh, in terms of length. Uh, generally, letter, letters of recommendation aren't longer than one single spaced page. So that gives you an idea of how much content you have to work with. That's why I say use two to three major themes or qualities, because that's going to give you around two to three body paragraphs. And that's going to be about one single spaced page. <clears throat> um, my third tip in terms of content is to avoid cliches and empty descriptor terms. 
as we always recommend for things like personal essays and, and application essays and things like that, you want to show, not tell. So first off, <clears throat> when I said those terms earlier weren't very useful, uh, saying that a student is the most impressive or the most promising student, saying that someone is impressive, saying that someone is promising actually doesn't say much of anything because you're not demonstrating how and why someone is impressive or has promise. Excuse me. <clears throat> Similarly, let me give you an example. Uh, when I was in my early years of my PhD, I had the opportunity to participate in a hiring search for our department. So generally hiring committees in university departments will be composed of scholars in that department, usually, you know, often a scholar or two from outside the department, but in a related field. And a lot of times graduate students, uh, one graduate student or maybe two will be able to sit on that committee as well. And so I was on this hiring committee. And I remember sitting in the department chair's office, this big, beautiful office, wood paneling, all of that. I was very awestruck, um, surrounded by all of these scholars, and we're pouring through just thousands of pages of applications. And as we were all reading through one candidate's letters of recommendation, the department chair lets out this huge sigh. And he says, oh, dear. Oh, he called her a hard worker talk about the death knell for your application and everyone else in the room let out this very knowing laugh and i was very confused <laughs> i was 20 probably 25 years old first time ever doing anything like this first time reading letters of recommendation uh, and i was i was really really confused as to why it would be a bad thing to be a hard worker and so i built up the courage to actually ask why everyone was laughing what on earth uh, was wrong with being a hard worker and they explained that there isn't anything wrong with being a hard worker of course i mean if you're going to excel in academia you have to work hard the problem was that the term was cliche and that it was imprecise, right? Um, if the best praise that someone can give you is to say that you're a hard worker, that's kind of seen as unfortunate from the, the insider perspective, from the perspective of those reading letters of recommendation. Um, instead of using those kinds of empty terms, again, you want to show, not tell. So for example, if you do consider yourself a hard worker, don't write in the letter, the student is a hard worker. Instead, you would want to give examples and anecdotes using narrative to discuss times when you went above and beyond, when you were able to successfully juggle multiple pressing responsibilities, when you were able to put in the extra time and dedication necessary to complete a substantial project or something like that. This is going to be much more effective than cliches and empty terminology. So again, instead of saying someone is a promising student, for example, give examples of why you think that student or why, you know, you think the professor thinks you have promise. What does it mean to have promise? Well, it usually means to um, take initiative, to show capacity for improvement, to show um, a critical capacity, an ability to um, collaborate with others and think of things through multiple perspectives. Instead of saying, this student has promise, use narrative, use anecdote, use examples to demonstrate the promise that you've shown. That's an important difference. And finally, my last key in terms of your content, you need to make sure that you review it very, very carefully and um, ver verify that the grammar is flawless. It is really unfortunately common for students to write these letters of recommendation or any number of other things, send them in and have them be either grammatically incorrect or have typos and things like that. Again, remember the dynamic that's at play in completing this request. You're still asking this person to be a, a 
referee for your application. You're asking for a formal evaluation of your suitability. And so turning in something that is grammatically imprecise, that has typos or other flaws, isn't going to reflect positively on you. So, you know, if you miss an apostrophe here or there, that's probably not going to mean the difference between them recommending you and not recommending you, but you want to make sure that you maintain professionalism throughout the process. And that means ensuring that it is a polished gem of a document before you send it off. Um, and now just very quickly, some tips on structure. Essentially, a letter of recommendation is almost set up like a short essay, a very short essay, one single space page, but a short essay nonetheless, which is to say it generally has an introduction, a body, a conclusion, and a thesis. The thesis of the letter of recommendation quite simply is that you, the student, has the qualities and academic competence necessarily necessarily necessary to thrive in the program to which they are applying. Everything that you put into the letter should be organized around that central argument that you will thrive in this program. Um, the introduction essentially is the first paragraph of the letter where usually there's a, a an unequivocal statement of support for the student's application, an indication of how long the professor has known the student, the capacity in which they've known them, the courses they've taken together and things like that, um, and an indication of why they are a suitable reference, why they know you well enough to recommend you. So that can, again, be speaking to projects that you've done, uh, the, of course, the length of time that they've known you, the ways in which they've observed you succeeding, excelling, accomplishing. The body uh, is going to be usually two to three paragraphs, again, organized around those two to three key themes or qualities that you want this professor to speak to in their letter. Uh, you want to make sure that you're using specific examples, anecdotes, drawing on narrative to pull the reader in and to show them these wonderful qualities rather than just telling them that you have those qualities. You can talk about the qualities uh, around your discipline in particular. You can also talk about particular projects that you've taken on that have stood out, uh, research that you've done. If you've worked as a TA or a tutor with the professor, you can speak to that. Um, and anything else that really highlights your suitability for the profession from that professor's perspective. And then finally, the conclusion would be a closing paragraph, um, one that usually reflects more on sort of personal attributes than academic accomplishments or um, qualities that facilitate academic success. So, you know, if you have a, a genuinely um, sort of friendly professional relationship with your professor and you feel that they can speak to who you are as a person, whether you're easy to get along with, whether you're a strong collaborator, whether you have a positive outlook and growth mindset and things like that, you can add those things in the conclusion. And, and honestly, that might be the most sort of uncomfortable part for someone to write about. So if you're not comfortable making those kinds of connections, you could leave that for the professor to write on their own. Um, I remember one of my professors, actually the professor that I was terrified to ask about the letter of recommendation, actually let me read the letter that he wrote for me. It was such a special moment in my life. And I remember in the closing paragraph reading him say that he just genuinely liked me as a person. And I started just crying. I was so happy. It was so lovely to see someone that I respected so much say something like that about me. And so, you know, if you feel like you can make those kinds of evaluations, you can, but you also might feel that like they might be a little too private or personal and leave it to the professor to fill that in. So however you decide to move forward after receiving a request to write your own letter of recommendation, remember that ultimately they're going to have the final say. Whatever you put down, they can edit, they can add to, they can remove it from, they can tweak in any way they want, or they can just sign it flat out. It's up to them. They will look it over to make sure that it's what it needs to be, that it's in their accurate voice and all of that. And you want to put sincere effort into what you are composing in terms of your draft. But if the professor think there's, thinks there's anything missing, anything that should be worded differently, anything that doesn't actually represent 
present their perspective, don't worry, they're going to edit it and make it what it needs to be. So do consider taking this opportunity to ensure that your letter of recommendation says and does all the things that you hope it will say and do. Uh, it might seem like a really sort of weird request at the top when you first get the request, but it's not all that uncommon and you can really take advantage of this and um, use it in your own best interest. So I hope that you enjoyed this video and that it was helpful. If so, please do go ahead, like it, share it with a friend who might benefit from it, and be sure to follow us on whichever social media platform you're on right now. If you'd like us to help you, please do click the link that should appear either above or below this video to see our programs and schedule a free initial consultation. We'll set you up with one of our admissions experts to answer any questions you might have and get you started on your preparations. We have programs to suit any of your needs, and we're always happy to work with you to determine which plan is going to support you and your goals most effectively. As ever, thank you so very much for your time. Take good care and I'll see you next time.